About four years ago, I took early retirement from the NHS and I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do at all. Um, in fact, I'd just got to the point where basically I'd had enough. So I handed in my notice with no idea what I was going to do. And my brother-in-law came up with the idea of um, letting part of my house out as a bed and breakfast um, just to tide me over which I did for a couple of years while I tried to think what on earth's name I was going to do. And about, <clears throat> for the first 10 years of my working life, I'd spent doing art, but mainly textiles. And I was walking around, kind of walking around the fields of Southall, thinking, racking my brains, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? And basically it was just staring me in the face. All I needed to do was go back to doing the art that I just loved so much. And I've got, on the side of my house, I've got an old shop. The house was built in 1756. And um, it's an old butcher's shop. And it's been used for many things over the years. It's sold old pottery and um, it's been an antique shop and it's sold ornaments, made all cats and all things like that. And I thought, gosh, that would just make the perfect studio. So I started gathering all my art things together, which was scattered in the loft. The house has got three stories. So right at the top, in boxes, never been unpacked, was all my art stuff. So I bought it all down and got it all in the old shop. And that was about 18 months ago now. Maybe not even that, really. And with a lot of trepidation and not knowing what I was going to do and what have you, I just gathered it all together. And I hadn't got very much confidence at all. And I was walking around practicing, saying to myself, I am, but what am I? <laughs> and eventually I started saying, I am an artist, which felt really weird because I didn't feel like I was an artist at all. But I thought, if I'm going to be an artist, I've got to say I'm an artist and believe I'm an artist. And so that I started doing that and I started to meet other artists in Southall, other painters, and would have conversations with them about art and very fearfully showed them some of my paintings and people absolutely loved a lot of the work I was doing. And then I started getting some commissions and that really frightened me. That, that was just the most frightening of all. But I did them and people really liked them, much to my great surprise. And I started to think, oh, maybe I am an artist. Maybe I can be an artist. Maybe I really can be an artist. And um, my work has progressed along the way. First of all, I started out doing the work that I particularly like doing and drawing, um, which being a nurse by background, I do a lot of reimagined anatomical drawings. And um, at first they didn't sell, but um, more recently they have. But then I started getting a lot of commissions for kind of the popular things like hares and cows and all that kind of thing. So I thought, okay, I'll do some of those as well. And that took off. And then somebody asked me, oh, will you give me some tuition? And I thought, oh my God, that'll be the blind leading the blind. But anyway, I did it and I really loved it. They loved it and I got into the swing of it. But I guess where I am is I'm still trying to find my voice and who, what kind of artist am I really? And I'm very drawn to anything that kind of makes me think about 
what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how I can progress along the journey. And how I, I like the process. I do like the journey and I like the process. And then um, Ridian approached me and said, would I like to do some painting to some of his music or some drawing? And at first I thought, hmm, that's really weird. <laughs> I've never done that before. I don't have music on when I paint and draw. I know a lot of people do, but I don't. Um, and I thought, okay, let's give it a go. That would be really interesting. And um, he sent me some music and I didn't listen to it for quite a few days because I was thinking, I can't do this. Maybe I'm not an artist. <laughs> what kind of music will it be? What if I can't produce anything? What, what will happen? Anyway, eventually um, turned the first track on, which was just for me, it was the most beautiful music. I just loved it. This lovely guitar music. And I sat there thinking and just absorbing the music and listening to it and seeing what would come into my mind. And the first one was a track called Harari. And um, it was such a bouncy piece. The notes were kind of bouncing up and down and it reminded me of I do like drawing hairs, although they are commercial, I do like drawing them. It did remind me of hairs and the way they, why I particularly like hairs is because they'll be in long grass and all of a sudden you'll just see a pair of ears come up and then they'll go down again. And the music that was bouncing just made me think of the ears that were coming up for the hairs. And so I started drawing a hair and I had in my mind what kind of hair I wanted it to be. But then I listened to the track again and it somehow it didn't kind of sound like England to me. It sounded like India. So I thought, right, I've got to look for a picture of an Indian hair. So I found a picture of an Indian hair and they are slightly different. They've got shorter ears, they've got black on the nape of the neck, and they've got a lot of black hairs in their coat. So I started doing some watercolour painting for the ears, which I then scanned into the computer, and then I started drawing the photo that I got, drawing it digitally. And once I got it looking how I wanted to, with the watercolour in the ears, I then printed it out and then I started drawing in over the top the, all the little black hairs with a um, calligraphy pen. Um, and that was it. I thought it was finished then. And I thought, OK, I'll go on to the second track. And I started listening to the second track, which I can't remember what it was called. Strawberry Sunshine, was it? No, San, San, San Fran. Yes, San Fran. I started listening to San Fran. And that was just, uh, it was more of, the mood wasn't as bouncy, it was like, it felt like it was blanketing, like it was sort of enveloping me. And it was a little bit more sombre. And I thought, hmm, maybe what's missing from my hair painting is snow. Because of this kind of warm enveloping feeling from the music. And so I thought, yeah, that would really finish it off, is putting some snowflakes on it. And so I did. I put some snowflakes around it. Um, 
and I looked at it and I thought, yeah, that's really completed it, and then had a sudden panic that uh, do Indian hairs actually go in the stone? <laughs> and then I thought, well, there's Nepal and the Himalaya, so they're bound to, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so that was how that painting came about. Um, and the next track I listened to was Strawberry Sunshine, which was very upbeat with ascending and descending notes and it was quite fast and quite sparkly. And it made me think of water and um, great sprays of water. Um, and so I thought, oh yeah, that just reminds me of a waterfall, all the water cascading over the top. So with that, um, I first of all drew the image digitally for that and then I um, bleached out all the colour in it and I changed the colour balance um, and turned up the hue and the saturation so that I got a lot of purples, a lot of cyan, a lot of yellow ochre in it things in the rocks and the water that perhaps we don't see but are there um, and so then when I'd got all that how I wanted it to be I printed it out and then I painted from that so I painted that one in acrylic paints um, I really enjoyed doing that one actually and then the final track was Gregory the Great and that one again, took, I thought it might lead me into another painting, but actually it took me back to the waterfall because again, the waterfall image, even though I'd done it, it was still quite flat. It hadn't got the 3D kind of feel that I wanted it to have. And it made me look again at the because it was a kind of more peaceful track with it had deeper bass notes in it it made me look at the form underneath the waterfall made me look more carefully at the rocks and the depth that was there so I started working more on the rocks and made them rougher instead of smooth and gave them a depth to them um, and so that's how that kind of finished that picture for me. Um, yes, because I was exploring different music, I thought I would use a different medium to paint on. So instead of choosing ordinary artist paper, I decided to choose um, photographic film to paint on. And one of the reasons was because I thought it might loosen up the way I was painting because um, I can I can throw things throw paint on just paper and see what happens but actually if I get a paintbrush in my hand a lot of my painting gets very tight so if you paint on and the music wasn't the music was expansive so I wanted the art to replicate that and be more expansive and I don't know if you've ever painted on photographic film but if you paint with acrylic paint on it you might imagine that the paint would slide over the surface but it doesn't it sticks completely and dries in a second so you can't do anything and go over your brush stroke again and make it perfect once you put it down it's down you can't move it so I wanted some of that in it as well. Um, and yes, that, that has also changed the way that I will take my art forward because I've been trying very hard not to go back over things. And if anybody comes to me for tuition, I'm always telling them, don't go over your strokes. And I do it all the time. So <laughs> it was really helpful to do that. So that was a really good part of doing this project as well.